I got a great question from a player who asked me, should you choke up when you're at the plate? So let's talk about it. Hey, it's Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training. Welcome back to another video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button right now. I'd really appreciate that. Now, should you choke up on the bat when you're at the plate? Well, the answer is, you know, it really depends on the hitter. It's an individual personal preference, okay? Some hitters love the feeling of choking up on their baseball bat a little bit. Other hitters can't stand it. And so I don't think that it's wise to develop some sort of a cookie cutter approach, a standard that every single hitter needs to do. I think at the end of the day, it's your decision. It's what you're comfortable with. It's a personal preference, okay? Choking up has a lot of benefits. Um, you know, mainly you definitely are going to feel more bat control when you do choke up on the baseball bat. You're gonna feel more bat control. You're also, it's gonna allow you to stand a little bit closer to the plate, which is very, very helpful, especially with two strikes on you. And it's also going to uh, help you avoid getting jammed. In fact, that was one of Barry Bond's biggest reasons why he decided to choke up on the baseball bat was because he said, I hate the feeling of getting jammed. And so at the end of the day, choking up, up on the bat, it's your personal preference. I would strongly recommend it with two strikes, maybe not your entire at bat, but with two strikes. And with that being said, the value of this video is not going to come from me just telling you yes to choke up on the bat or no to choke up on the bat. The value of the video is going to come from sharing with you five ways that you can become a better two strike hitter. Because when you're thinking about choking up, a lot of the times it comes down to when you're in a two strike situation. So I figured aside from just telling you to choke up or to not choke up, I want to give you five things you can do to be a better two strike hitter. So the first thing you can do to be a better two strike hitter, sounds like common sense, don't get to two strikes, okay? Crush good pitches early in the count, especially at the younger levels, guys. You're gonna get more fastballs than you know what to do with. When you get a little bit older, guys are gonna start throwing you off-speed pitches and really mixing it up with the first pitch, and so it's a little bit easier as you get older um, to fall into those two-strike situations, but especially when you're younger, I would say the high school level and below, you're gonna get a lot of first pitch fastballs because a lot of the pitchers don't have the best control with the other uh, pitches that they have in their arsenal, right? And every single pitcher, every single pitching coach in the nation, what are they preaching? They're preaching to the pitchers to get ahead early. So if the pitcher's goal, not all of them are successful at it, but if their goal is to throw a first pitch strike because they wanna get ahead of the hitter, because as soon as they get ahead of you, then they can start throwing pitches, really mixing it up and you're kind of at their mercy. So if their goal, is to throw a first pitch strike and get ahead of you, well then your goal should be to step in the batter's box. I don't care if it's your first at bat of the day. I don't care if it's your first pitch that you see. You should step in the batter's box when you're ready to hit and only when you're ready to hit. If you're not ready to swing the baseball bat, even at the first pitch, if you're not aggressive and ready to hit, don't step in the batter's box. Or if you step in and you find yourself not really truly ready to hit, call time, all right? Make sure that time's granted, but step out, clear your head. But I'm a firm believer that you have to step in the box ready to hit because that first pitch or the second pitch, you never know until the end of your at bat, but the first pitch, might be the best pitch that you see that entire at bat or heck that entire day, the whole game, right? It might be the first pitch, it might be the second pitch. So it's wise to be ready to go early, right? And crush good pitches early. If they're over the wide of the plate and you can handle them, handle them. Make pitchers pay for throwing the ball over the middle of the plate. But I think one of the worst things you can do, you know, everybody's gonna get into two strike counts, right? It's just part of the, the game. You might, you know, not truly be ready to hit and take one, then the next pitch you might foul off and all of a sudden you're down 0-2. It's gonna happen. But specifically, if you find yourself in a lot of two strike counts, um, really, really go back to asking yourself, when I step in the batter's box, am I truly ready to swing the baseball bat? Do I have a good aggressive mentality at the dish or am I kind of trying to wait and see the ball out of the hand? So if you're waiting to see if it's a strike, it's too late. So you have to step in, ready to go. If you want to be a better two strike hitter, don't get to two strikes. The next thing that's really going to help you out is stand a little bit closer to the plate with two strikes. You don't have to do it your entire at bat, 
but I would recommend scooting closer to the plate, as in, you know, not closer to the pitcher, but closer into the plate with two strikes. That's where the choking up is gonna come in handy, right? Because if you're down here at the end of the bat and you, you know, scoot a lot closer to the plate, well, if he throws you an inside pitch, you're gonna have a high likelihood of getting jammed. But if you scoot up on the bat just, you know, an inch or two, you're gonna have more bat control, which is great with two strikes, right? To put the ball in play, make something happen, make the defense make a play. Um, so that's, that's one benefit of you know standing closer to the plate and choking up, but also standing closer to the plate, uh, it's gonna give you more plate coverage, right? Common sense, right? But if I'm way back here in the box, way this way, do I have much plate coverage here? Of course not, right? It's very difficult. Even if I go like this, it's very, very difficult to reach that outside part of the plate. And this would not be a very powerful swing anyway, right? So the closer that we scoot to the plate, obviously the more plate coverage that we have, which is great with two strikes because here's the reason why. A lot of players are afraid. They don't wanna scoot closer to the plate with two strikes because they don't wanna get jammed. They don't wanna get beat inside. You have to be aware of you are closer to the plate. So a pitch that might look inside, it might be a strike if you're closer to the plate. But here's something interesting that you have to realize. At all levels of baseball, the majority of looking strikeouts, strikeouts where you watch the ball, right? You don't take a swing, you watch it. The majority of those strikeouts are on the outside part of the plate. Isn't that interesting? And pitchers, especially with two strikes, they don't want to come inside because a lot of hitters like that inside pitch that they can pull it, right? Hitter or pitchers rather, they like to keep the ball away. They like to keep it away. So if their goal, especially with two strikes, is throwing you pretty much nothing but away stuff, wouldn't it make sense to scoot a little bit closer to the plate? So try that with two strikes. I really think it's going to help you out. Scoot a little bit closer to the plate. You might have to choke up in that situation though. And that directly segues right into the next point. Okay, with two strikes, not your entire at bat, but with two strikes, you should think outside and react in. Okay, or think away and react in. Does that make sense? Because here's the reason why, okay? It's very, very difficult, and I'm sure if you've done this backwards, you could admit that it's very, very difficult to step in the batter's box and be looking for something inside, be looking for an inside pitch, and he throws you a pitch away. It's very, very difficult to pull the trigger and actually swing at that pitch, right? But, however, if you step in the batter's box thinking, okay, think outside, react in. Think outside, I'm thinking away. He's gonna throw me away here. I'm a little bit closer to the plate. He's gonna throw me away. I choke up on the bat just a little bit. You're thinking away, 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 and all of a sudden he tries to bust you inside. It's much easier to just pull your hands in tight to your body like this, get the barrel out there, and either foul that pitch off and live to see another day, or crush that pitch, right? It's easier to think outside, react in, than it is to be thinking, you know, okay, inside, 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 all of a sudden it's an outside pitch, good luck hitting that. That's when you see those kind of like butt out swings like that. So it's gonna take some getting used to. Um, it's probably something that you haven't really consciously thought about before but it's gonna make a big time difference. Remember, majority of strikeouts are on that outer part of the plate. This next one's big. With two strikes, don't leave the call up to the umpire, the man behind the dish, okay? Never leave the call up to an external, an outside force that you don't have control over. You have control over whether or not you swing, right? You don't have control, however, of when the pitch comes in and you take it, you don't know if that umpire, maybe he's having a rough day, maybe he can't really see very well that day, maybe something's going on there, maybe he's had a rough day, maybe he's hot, he's ready to go home, maybe he thinks that that is the strike zone, maybe he's just having a rough day. I mean, they all, they're, they're human beings, right? They're not gonna be perfect, they're gonna make bad calls. And so with two strikes, do you really wanna leave your at bat up to the umpire? No, you want to do whatever you can to take advantage of the at bat and you know whether you're successful or not at the plate, wouldn't you rather take on that responsibility yourself instead of having somebody else uh, make that decision for you? It's kind of like if some outside force told you this is the exact job that you have to have for your entire life, that wouldn't really be fair, right? Don't you kind of want to control your own destiny? And so I encourage players with two strikes, and I know it's a difficult concept to grasp because you want to swing at good pitches, right? But with two strikes, you got to widen your strike zone. 
and you really have to have the mentality of, okay, I'm getting on top of the dish a little bit, and if it's anywhere that I can touch it with my bat, if it's anywhere close, now obviously not something up here, right, but if it's anywhere that's reasonable, that's close, that I can touch with my bat and I can put it in play, you have to have the mentality of doing that, or at least fouling that pitch off and living to extend the at bat and see another pitch, right? But don't, especially borderline pitches, don't just, you know, I know the feeling all too well of, you know, being up here and it's a borderline pitch and, you know, you, you, it's too late to swing and you just kind of have this quick thought in your head of, I hope that he doesn't ring me up and you look back and there it is, right? He's ringing you up. Don't let him make that decision for you. If it's anywhere close to the plate, remember, we're protecting the plate. If it's anywhere close, swing at it, put the ball in play, give yourself a chance, make them make a play. And the last thing that's really gonna help you with two strikes, or really any count for that matter, is sit fastball and adjust off speed. And this is difficult because especially when you're down in like an 0-2 count or a 1-2 count, a lot of the times, what are you expecting? You're kind of expecting the junk, right? You're kind of expecting curveball in the dirt, you know, slide or change up, something off speed. A lot of times you're not really expecting a fastball there, but unfortunately, the reality of the matter is you need to have your fastball timing in case he juices up and throws a fastball, you can be ready for it, and you have to just adjust backwards from there, right? Because it's, it's very difficult if you get in the batter's box and you're thinking, it's two strikes, he's going to throw me a curveball here. And if he doesn't throw you a curveball, if it's a curveball, great. You know, your timing's going to be perfect, you're going to crush that curveball. But if he doesn't throw you a curveball, and you're thinking, okay, curveball, sit back, wait on it, curveball, curveball, wait, 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 and he throws you a fastball, your eyes are going to light up and you're going to go up, 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 and you're going to get that frozen feeling because... It's too late, it's too hard to be sitting on something that's off speed and adjust forward, speed everything up. It's much easier to think, okay, you have to recognize what you might get. I might get some junk here, but you have to step in with, okay, time the fastball. Fastball, 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 adjust everything else. Fastball, 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 it's something off speed. And then what you do is you just hold up for just a split second, just one little tick. It's probably gonna require you to sink down just a little bit, and then you're gonna try to take that off speed pitch up the middle or the other way, but sit fastball and adjust. There's no other way. So that's it. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And really quickly, if you enjoyed it, there's two quick things that I would like you to do. First of all, subscribe to our channel if you're not already. Join the UBT family. We're coming out with new baseball videos every single week, and I don't want you to miss any of them because they're gonna get you better, okay? So subscribe. And then the second thing, if you haven't done so already, go check out our free on-demand hitting training. If you found this video helpful, this quick little YouTube video, I know you're gonna find that training to be very, very helpful and it's 100% free. All you have to do is go to improvemyhitting.com. That's improvemyhitting.com, or you're gonna see in the comment section, that first comment from Ultimate Baseball Training, you'll see that pinned comment, and I'll leave the link there for you, so you can just click on that link, and then that'll take you to a page where you can go watch your free on-demand hitting training. So do those two things, subscribe, go watch the training. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and I'll see you next time.